What's going on, everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and tonight we're going to be talking about the five new weapons coming in Season 2, upcoming game modes, and some other important updates. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and let me know down below in the comment section what weapons do you guys want to see return as a surprise either during Season 2 Reloaded or even in future seasons of Modern Warfare 2's life cycle. If you guys aren't happy with the five weapons that did get confirmed for February 15th, or excuse me, the three that are coming out on the 15th, the other two are coming at some point in March, let me know what you guys want to see down below, whether it's a new weapon, whether it's a returning one for Modern Warfare 19. I've seen lots of comments lately asking about more weapon vaults being added, better blueprints, and of course, more weapons that could be added into existing weapon receivers that are in Modern Warfare 2 right now. I think to generate a new era of COD 2.0 in terms of multiplayer and gunsmith, we gotta start seeing more, more weapons being added in much more frequently, not just with the beginning of a brand new season. But it was confirmed by the COD League and even Treyarch that more information about ranked play is coming this upcoming Monday. So, there'll be a dedicated blog from Treyarch talking all about what's going on with the competitive aspect, the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. Ranked has been in development for quite some time. Obviously, the CDL Mosfet that's in the game right now also got pushed back. That came out, I think it was in late December, if I'm not mistaken, right around Season 1 Reloaded, and that was meant to come out much sooner than that, but that was a bit of a taste of what to expect from this game's ranked mode, which was also supposed to come out on February 1st, but obviously, Season 2 did get pushed back by two weeks. I'm looking forward to it. There'll be plenty of divisions, rewards to unlock, and some other surprises regarding ranked that I can't wait to jump into when the blog post does come out early this week. I'll make a separate video here on the channel breaking all that down for those out there that may be interested. I don't often cover the competitive aspect of COD multiplayer, but I have been getting into it more and more as of lately, and I always enjoy doing those reaction streams to whenever there's like a major finals event or the COD championships each year, so let me know if you want to see more of that here on the main channel. But we also ended up getting a surprise blog post for multiplayer that nobody out there is really talking about, and this blog post didn't even get marketed on the official COD Twitter. It's a blog post centered all around Dome, the upcoming remaster coming on February 15th, a map that has sparked quite a bit of controversy since it's the only quote-unquote new map coming in Season 2 for multiplayer. The other one is, of course, Museum, which we did see during the beta. Those are the only two 6v6 experiences that we are going to end up getting, but the blog post also went into detail about some of the spawn points, how to traverse through the environment. We got some nice screenshots of the map as well. Obviously, a new skybox is also present in this version of Dome that we don't see over in Almazra for BR or even DMZ, but even though Dome is a good map, I've always enjoyed enjoyed it from Modern Warfare 2, 3, it was in Ghost, we saw it again in Vanguard in the form of, what was it, Radar last year. Although the map is good, I just still feel like maps that are cut out from Almazra and used for 6v6 should come out in between major content drops, such as the start of a new season. I think these maps should be coming out maybe every time there's a drought, so right after, let's say, the season comes out two, three weeks later, drop an extra map or two that's from Almazra, the big BR experience, or even drop those in a month like January, for example, where we had a big drought from Season 1 Reloaded until marketing for Season 2 would have been a perfect opportunity to see a map like this, but I really do wonder why this blog post got kind of swept under the rug a little bit. Let me know if you guys even saw it over on the COD blog. I know I just noticed it as of a couple of days ago. But we also have Phantom Ice over on Twitter who put out the following prediction for future multiplayer updates. He does believe that we'll be seeing 66 versions of Rust and Shutdown added to Modern Warfare 2 since, again, they already exist over on Almazra. Now, Rust was obviously a remaster in Modern Warfare 19 and it played very well, so I I wouldn't complain about seeing Rust again, although it would be just a dome situation where it's just cut from Almazra, the environment already existed in the base game, so it wouldn't really take much work to kind of just add these maps into the rotation of 6v6 in between major content updates, right? Instead of marketing these as new maps for the start of a new season, just drop them for fun at some point in between seasons. People out there would be a lot less frustrated about the content we're getting in multiplayer, but a map like Shotdown obviously was in COD 4, remastered in 2016, and I don't believe we saw it ever since. I could be mistaken. Taken, but yeah, Shodan is also in Almazra BR, and I believe you can even play it in Ground War, if I'm not mistaken, but with that, again, wouldn't complain about seeing more maps in multiplayer, but since they're just from Almazra, it'll just still feel like multiplayer is a bit hollow in terms of original experiences. But now taking a look at the Season 2 blog post, it does confirm five new weapons with three available in the Battle Pass. New armaments and returning favorites highlight the weaponry to be available in Season 2 at launch and in Season. Get three of these through the pass, of course, and the remaining two through Seasonal Challenges. So keep in mind at some point on Monday or Tuesday we'll end up getting a separate gameplay trailer and blog post about season 2 battle pass yesterday I did post a separate video though 
well, talking about what we know so far about the new pass, a sneak peek at some of the rewards and some of the sectors. Check that out with the link down below. But with the preload also coming at some point, I want to say on Tuesday, we'll end up getting early access to all these weapons via private matches, which I will be covering, of course, in a separate video. But with the first weapon, the ISO Hemlock Assault Rifle, part of the ISO platform available at launch and through the pass, it does say a powerful and enhanced rifle from Expedite Firearms is designed to take both 5.56 and subsonic .300 BLK ammunition, providing battlefield advantage in any situation. I have seen comparisons to the ACR, but that's not what this weapon is. However, I do want to remind you guys that in Modern Warfare 19, there was an ISO SMG. So, would not be surprised if during the mid-season, as a surprise, or during Season 3 or something, we'll end up seeing an SMG of sorts as a part of the same weapon platform the ISO also added to Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. I'll keep you guys posted with what's going on with that. But, I remember the ISO was mentioned here in this blog, and I'm like, wait a second, that sounds familiar. I looked it up, and yeah, what do you know? It was a DLC weapon, of course, in Modern Warfare 19. It was added at some point very late into that game's life cycle. But next up, we do have the KV Broadside Shotgun, a part of the cast-off platform, available, of course, at launch. It does say, bringing the power of the 12-gauge to the cast-off platform, the KV Broadside is the fastest-firing semi-auto firearm in the shotgun class, destroys targets at close range with impunity. Again, we don't know exactly what sector this weapon is going to be at, or the ISO, but we'll end up learning that at some point early next week. And, of course, in Modern Warfare 2, as a part of the cast-off platform, we have the cast-off 762, the 545, we also have the 74U, a classic, of course. And then we have the Vaznov 9K, also like the 74U, a bit of a variance of that. We also have the Mini Back, which is like the Bullfrog from Black Ops Cold War. And then, of course, the RPK, which is right now the meta across Warzone 2.0. So they're going to be adding a shotgun to this list. It'll be right here towards the end. But then going back to the blog itself, we then have the Dual Kadache's Melee Weapon, or excuse me, the Dual Kadachi's Melee Weapon, can't even say that right, also from Modern Warfare 19. These are returning, available at launch. It doesn't say in the Battle Pass, but they will be, it says it right here, in the Battle Pass themselves. A powerful melee weapon that can quickly move towards a target with a longer range attack. Each swipe has an impressive range and faster forward motion towards enemies compared to the knife melee weapon, though this comes at a slight cost, a slower strafe and sprint speed. So these are probably going to be meta, whether it's an MP or Warzone. People out there are probably going to be running these as their secondary very, very often. Will probably be as annoying as Cali sticks were from Modern Warfare 19 and even Warzone 1, but we'll have to wait and see. I can't remember exactly how good these were in the previous Modern Warfare, but I'm sure they were pretty damn powerful, of course. And again, it'll be a free weapon through the Battle Pass itself. Not sure what sector, though. We then, of course, have the Crossbow, which will be in the Marksman Rifle category, not the Special category, and does say Launch Window. Again, not available through the Battle Pass, but through completing the 7 Path of the Ronin Event Challenge, which I did cover in a separate video that I have linked down below. Unfortunately, though, only three of these challenges will be available during the launch of Season 2, and I think the other four challenges will be available across the next four weeks before Season 2 Reloaded, if I had to take a guess. It does say, though, Silent and agile, this high-performance crossbow fires 20.0 bolts with exceptional lethality. Exclusive customization, distinct functionality, and unique ammunition types put this weapon in a class of its own. Standard 20.0 bolts are recoverable and are undetectable by trophy systems. Super damn cool. And with that being said, you can also pick up the crossbow through the in-game store bundle, which is also confirmed on the roadmap. It will feature tracer fire, of course. But this was also, I believe, meta at some point during Warzone 1's life cycle. A lot of people out there were using the crossbow, and it was in insane. So when they ended up adding in a crossbow to Cold War and even Vanguard, people out there were running two crossbows at one time, which was ridiculous. This is probably going to be dangerous to go up against in either multiplayer or Warzone, so be on the lookout for this one when it does end up coming out at some point during the launch window of Season 2. Now, also in the blog post, it is mentioned that later in Season, we're going to be seeing a new lethal equipment known as the Shuriken. Now, the Shuriken did leak out a couple of months ago, which would make sense for a Japanese-themed season, of course, and that is what Season 2 is. So, with that, I am a big fan of what Vanguard did last year, which I hope Mono for two does more of, which is bringing out new forms of equipment, perks, and even field upgrades throughout the post-launch seasons. That's something that Cold War didn't even really do, and Modern Warfare 19 didn't really either, so aside from just doing base weapons and melee weapons, do some equipment like the Shuriken. That's also something that I think the community is very open to, which I'm personally excited about, and also in the mid-season update at some point in March, we're going to be seeing the Tempest Torrent Marksman Rifle. So, as of now, these are the only new weapons coming to Modern Warfare 2 in Season 2, but of course, if there's a big mid-season update that we 
just couldn't have really predicted, there might be even more weapons that get added in at some point in mid-March. But now when it comes to the brand new game modes coming to Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, unfortunately, they're all party modes. Hopefully, we get some actual new original modes in future seasons, like Cold War was getting. But at launch, we're going to be seeing Infected, obviously a fan favorite from Modern Warfare 3, which has been in quite a few Call of Duties ever since. We then have Gun Game, which the icon leaked for a good couple of weeks ago. We knew that one was coming. I'm a fan of Gun Game, especially for videos where I'm like, you know what? I don't want to sweat 6v6, but I do want to get some multiplayer B-roll. Let's hop onto a party game mode of sorts, right? So that's going to be cool. And keep in mind, I believe Gun Game will probably get people some of an early access to some of the new DLC weapons if you don't own the Battle Pass or don't unlock the crossbow through the Ronin challenges. That's probably what's going to happen since Gun Game typically gives us early access to blueprints, new weapons, etc. We then have Grind also coming at launch, which is a game mode from Call of Duty Ghost that came back in the form of Stockpile in Black Ops 3, even Black Ops Cold War. Big fan of this one. As it says, it's still confirmed with an added twist. Enemy dog tags are stackable and uh, must be banked at one of two fixed locations. So, huge fan of this game mode. I obviously sweat a lot of nukes in Stockpile from Cold War's life cycle. And also at launch, we're getting the classic hardcore mode, replacing Tier 1. Yes, classic hardcore in its full glory, as we all know it, is finally coming to Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer. Got a nice image there here for Season 2. Really excited for that one. But later in Season we're going to be seeing Drop Zone, a fan favorite mode from Modern Warfare 3 as well. And obviously it says a derivative of Hardpoint. Drop Zone sends a care package down into occupied Drop Zone areas every 15 seconds. So it is absolute mayhem for a map like Shipment. So many streaks being called in. I'm really a big fan of Drop Zone. And it also says, perfect for those wanting to ramp up their killstreak elimination numbers or who just love pure chaos. Expect this to be among the modes available in weekly playlist rotations over at launch. But I think they mean the launch of the mode, which is later in season, if that's what that means. And then also coming All or Nothing, a fan favorite also for Modern Warfare 3. It's absolutely insane. So with only throwing knives and a pistol with no ammo, can you rack up 20 eliminations to win this special free-for-all party game mode? Every operator gets additional perks starting with Scavenger, which allows for ammo pickups after the first elimination. And like other party game modes, feel free to bring the squad in or make new friends in the lobby. But lastly, also in season, one in the chamber. Self-explanatory. So look, party game modes are great. Like I said earlier with the 6v6 maps, it'd be cool if we saw content like this, like these party modes or maps ripped out of Almazra, just added in randomly, right, in between seasonal updates. That would really emphasize that we're in a new era of Call of Duty multiplayer where we're not just relying on new seasons or big content drops to get new maps, but we can also get new experiences in between the big ones, right? That would be fantastic to see. And this is perfect filler-like content that would work well, but hey, they're getting these all out the way right now. So hopefully that means in future seasons we get actual new modes, actual new maps, the works. So we'll have to wait and see how that works. But hey, content is content of the day, and that's what is coming to Mono Warfare 2 multiplayer in season two. But the last thing I want to say in regards to multiplayer is what could salvage the lack of actual new maps for 6v6 or ground war really this season could be the inclusion of gunfight at some point during reloaded. If gunfight comes out in March and it has let's say 3 to 5 original 2v2 maps that are not cut from existing maps in the game or Almazra, at least if it's a Sheikah Island, then I think that would kind of make up for a lack thereof when it comes to actual new environments for regular multiplayer. I know like I talked about earlier in the video with Phantom Isis Theory, we're probably just going to end up getting portions from Almazra, maybe even other BR maps like Las Almas added to multiplayer in future seasons. We might not even get any new locales that are from areas that we don't already have in the base game. At least take some areas from campaign, though. I mean, that awesome prison campaign level, and there's so many other spaces that you could pull from that we don't already have in regular BR. Let's see something like that, but I think if that happens in March, that could make up for what happened during the beginning of Season 2 in terms of multiplayer, but that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the five new weapons coming in Season 2? How are you feeling about the upcoming game modes that are just really party experiences for regular MP? And also, what are your thoughts on the other important updates regarding rank play and even that dome blog post? Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everybody.